Anyway, we've got him back on, Jonathan Bell. Jonathan, welcome aboard. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. Thanks for asking. Uh, of course, there's, there's two issues uh, you're coming on today to talk about. One of them, of course, is uh, federal uh, employees uh, uh, taking the Fifth Amendment. Uh, you know, give us some, give us uh, your take on it. And of course, you know, it's highlighted by Lois Lerner in the IRS scandal. Well, first of all, thanks again for having me on uh, your show. I think this is the second time I'm on, so thank you for that. So, sure. As far as uh, federal employees are concerned, just like every other citizen of this country, they have the right to plead the fifth. Now, if they're still employed by an agency and they're under investigation, uh, they can plead the fifth, but they will be subjected to some uh, administrative discipline, which usually uh, is termination. Uh, so they will get fired from their job. They, they can't be protected from that. They just can't be forced to testify under oath uh, when there's some criminality or potential criminality involved. Oh, that's interesting, Jonathan. So in other words, pleading the fifth, there's no First Amendment right there that uh, you can claim to your employee. Listen, I'm, I'm just exercising my, my First Amendment right to express myself by basically not saying anything. Uh, that, there's no protection there for somebody. Yeah, and and and, that, and it's kind of like what you're saying. Criminal, criminal wise, uh, they they could do it. But as far as uh, administrative uh, investigations into potential misconduct, uh, that could also be a specification or charge brought against them for not cooperating in an investigation. So they could very well lose their job. This is not a carte blanche. Uh, thing where they could just say i plead the fifth now leave me alone and let me get back to my job now is this just government employees or is this any employee who's this, this, this is any employee any employee and and, and you know i i understand uh this case why it's highlighted but i mean listen they're, they're civilians like the rest of us and, and they have a right to plead the fifth uh to the extent they want her to testify i mean to be honest with you if i was her lawyer i would have her do the same thing. i know that's that's i've heard every single high-powered attorney say the same thing as her counsel Right. Uh, I would advise her to do the same thing. Right. And that's... It's either granted, I mean, if they granted her immunity, then she could testify to whatever they want. Yeah. Uh, if, if there is no immunity, then they can't force it to testify. They Just like any other uh, potential criminal matter, they have to subpoena documents, which I understand hundreds of thousands of documents, including emails from the IRS, was given to Congress, and they have to try to potentially build the case and do their investigation. You know, it's the, it's the Fifth Amendment. It's the Bill of Rights. It's the Constitution. What are you going to do? It applies yeah. to everybody. Yeah, I hear you there. But, you know, one of the th things that just stinks about it, and I was talking about this uh, before you came on, it's, you know, if, the, if, we, if, if we built this justice system, and justice is, uh, uh, is the essence of justice is getting to the truth. I mean, that, that's what it's for. Uh, and, you know, how can you get, you know, and one way of getting to the truth is if somebody's accused of, of doing something wrong, improper, illegal, uh, an act against society, then you know what? That person should be held, you know, you stand there, you're ac these are your ac accusations against you, now defend yourself. And if all you're going to do is stand there and say, you know what, I, I'm taking the fifth, I have a right to just remain silent and not say anything to my accuser, then they sit there, then then the accusations just keep on flying at the person. What happens as far as a judge is concerned, you know, just for the audience to understand this, now, it, now this is an administrative proceeding here. There's no judge involved, is there, with the lowest learner situation? There, there, there's no judge involved. However, there can be. Essentially, if, uh, if, if Congress wants to impose any type of uh, sanctions, they would have to get a House vote, and then they would have to turn it over to the uh, AUSA attorney's office, and then, then after that, they'd have to uh, get a grand jury together, indict. Then there would be a trial with a judge and ultimately a jury and then appeal. So technically, for any type of congressional contempt, you're looking years and years down the road. But, I, I mean, I, I think that a lot of this is, is political acting. I mean, obviously, they know that she's not going to testify without immunity. So if, if they really feel like there's no criminality involved, then they've got to give her community, uh, immunity. If they feel like there, there is potential for criminality, then they can't expect her and threaten her with these contempts because she, this is her this is her right as a u.s citizen well don't you, listen, yeah. th th this rule applies to everybody no, i understand in every, that in every situation i understand that but don't you think that uh, they wouldn't be doing this if if they don't you know you bring up the point that they must they must have some belief that they that she's not guilty of of something or else they wouldn't make a charade of it but it, it, on the flip side of that they wouldn't be keeping on asking her to do to testify and to and to speak 
about these allegations if they didn't think that she actually did something and hoping that she ev- eventually is going to be so embarrassed that she'll she'll talk about, you know, whatever happened. Right. But but there's also been some speculation that apparently she's given a lot of testimony to the Department of Justice and there are other reasons right. that you that you plead the fifth. I mean, sometimes it's a matter of you know, maybe she didn't do anything wrong. Maybe. I'm not saying she didn't. Right. But maybe she didn't do anything wrong, but she's afraid she's going to contradict some prior testimony she gave to the Department of Justice, and she doesn't want to be brought up on charges for something as little as that. So there's a, there, there are other reasons. But on the same token, I mean, what does pleading the fifth essentially mean? I mean, when you hear someone's pleading the fifth, What's your natural instinct? Natural, my that the person yeah. did something wrong. That's right. That, so, generally so I, speaking, I don't think yes. that anyone really gets out scot free on, on pleading the fifth, in my opinion. Uh, well, so far she's doing all right, don't you think? Well, again, doing all right, but then there's public perception. Look at all, look what all the people think of her and think of of her uh, pleading the fifth and 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 and, and jumping to conclusions about what was really done and what was intentional and things of that nature. So. You know, there's, there's also the court of public policy. She has to go out and live her life, and there's a lot of people uh, speaking negatively about her. And, 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 and well, maybe she's some probably, of it's warranted and maybe some of it's unwarranted. Well, Jonathan yeah. Bell, I'm sure she's got a nice pension. You know, she did she uh, step down on her own accord, or did she get, did she get fired? I, I, I believe she did a voluntary resignation. I think she saw the writing on the wall and took a voluntary resignation. Right. which basically, uh, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, probably protects her, her, uh, her pension. It does protect her pension. Which is, that's another crazy thing about the whole system. I mean, I'm sick and tired of these people committing crimes, and just by the sheer fact that they, before, hey, listen, before the judge comes to town, and before the, the sheriff takes me away and locks me up, I'm going to step down, hand in my resignation, so I lock in my pension. And, you know, in fact, we covered this, this issue yesterday, Jonathan, on the, on the program. There's, uh, the, there's an assemblyman uh, up in, uh, in Albany that's uh, fighting for some new legislation that basically says if a public official, if any government employee commits a felony, then they risk ha- uh, losing their entire pension. And hopefully it's going to be grandfathered in. I, it's just absurd to me that, that the system, that the people would allow this to happen. That, you know, why is it that we, and, and this alludes to another point that I was making be, just before you got on the program, mm-hmm. is it seems as though the system has, has, has evolved into this great gargantuan, uh, uh, perplexing, you know, revolving door, you know, uh, system of protecting the guilty more than it protects the innocent. I'm not 100% disagreeing with you, but on the same token, she did speak. Apparently, she did speak with the Department of Justice, and they that's what, yeah, I heard. No criminality. Everybody's innocent until proven guilty. Now, let me ask you this, Jonathan. I'm sorry. Just, just one, yeah. one yeah, more note on that. You know how many people in this country are wrongfully convicted, where they have, well, finally, because of some type of DA evidence, they get out after serving like a uh, a 20-year term. I mean, it, it, it happens. So. Those protections sometimes are very important. I mean, you, 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 have to make, you have to make laws and rules, and you have to fit every single case under them. So you can't just look at one particular case and say it doesn't fit here because it wasn't meant for one particular you know, case. I'm, it's meant for all cases. I, I, I concede that, that some people are innocently convicted. And I believe in, in, the, in, the, in the laws according to Gomez, what I would do if I was the emperor, I would say if any law enforcement official... Uh, screws around with the evidence and wrongly uh, brings in a person. And, you know, this this has happened before, obviously. You know, we've seen movies on it. There's, sure. there's case evidences where they've fooled with the evidence. They didn't present all the evidence. And the, the, they knew, actually. Some, sometimes these, these police officers and law enforcement officials, they know that the person's innocent. But just to save face, they railroad the person anyway. Mm-hmm. I say if it's found out that that person's actually innocent, then every scumbag law enforcement officer that was responsible for nailing this person, they they get sentenced to the to the criminal act that the, that those people got. So that's how I would solve that problem. You won't see any more. And, 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 and this time I agree with you 100. percent No, reser- <laughs> I mean, no reservations. There. I mean that's just that that's just uh, you know when, when I take law enforcement very very seriously and and I support the law enforcement officials very 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 much because I believe that the overwhelming majority of them risk their lives every single day to protect my life and my family's life. Uh, but then you know there's rotten apples in every bunch. In every barrel. I'm a big supporter of law enforcement as well. I represent a lot of federal air marshals. 
uh, here in the New York office and, and across the country, and uh, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. But uh, unfortunately, sometimes there are bad apples, and you got to weed them out. The problem really comes with covering up. There are sometimes good That's people right. who feel pressured to cover up for the mistakes that other people make. Yeah, it's often the case. I mean, look at Nixon. It's it's not in in what actually happened. It's the cover up. Right. That, that, so, but anyway, getting back to the Lois Lerner situation, I, I understand, and you mentioned it uh, a few times, that uh, apparently she did speak to the Department of Justice. Now, can the Department of Justice be compelled to give over the, you know, those interviews? Um, that's a good question. I don't know that I know the answer to that. I know that if, if a, um, I, I, I recognize if a judge signs off on a subpoena, but to be honest with you, I haven't seen that before. So I don't want to de definitively tell you. I mean, my, there's probably some protections that I guarantee it's probably difficult, and if they do get anything, it'll probably be hev heavily redacted, but I don't know that they can get it, to be honest with you. Now, we, you know, the public have, uh, has uh, been listening as, as they've heard from time to time the lowest learner situation and the scandal. You hear the these terms, court order, and and uh, being held contempt. First of all, uh, can you talk a little bit about the court order? In other words, you know, Lois Lerner, you know, Lois Lerner was was given a court order to appear. Is that right? I mean, how, how do, you know, give us a rundown on those two those two terms. Yeah, a, a court order could certainly compel somebody to appear, and by going and appearing, she, she's cooperating with the court order. However, that doesn't force her to self-incriminate herself. So she could appear and then plead the fifth. As far as, as, far as um, uh, contempt, you know, as, as, I, as I stated before, the problem with contempt is it's going to take years to get resolved, again, between the House vote and then going to the U.S. Attorney's Office and jumping through all those loops and potential appeals. Before it even gets resolved, years are going to pass. And, and again, I just don't think that, they're, that anyone is going to really fully support uh, contempt when someone's concerned about uh, their Fifth Amendment rights, and they they opt to plead the Fifth. So I, I think I, I don't think that that really is going to hold much weight. And my understanding is uh, that Congress, other than making threats, hasn't taken any action to see the uh, contempt proceedings through. Folks, uh, joining us on the Newsmaker Line, Jonathan Bell. He's a federal employment attorney, talking a little bit about the Lois Lerner incident, talking about a federal employee or a government employee uh, taking the uh, pleading the Fifth Amendment, uh, thereby not having to say basically anything. And uh, you know. I mean, one thing that that's troubling here, Jonathan, and I think it's troubling to the American people, is, you know, it's bad enough we're afraid of the IRS just doing what they're there to do. But then when you add on and lump on this whole other um, alleged activity that they were doing, and, and I think they've got enough evidence that shows that the IRS was targeting conservative groups across, across the country during an election year, I mean, that is just troubling. Just, just knowing as, a, as an American citizen how overpowering the IRS is. I mean, when you get a letter from the IRS, you cringe. You almost sure. don't want to open it up. Sure. But when, when, you, when you're faced with, with these type of facts and, and, and evidence that, that I think shows, I mean, of course, Obama says there's not a smidgen of evidence that any, any wrongdoing happened, but I think there's plenty of evidence. There's groups that have come out uh, that, uh, with you know, records that clearly demonstrate that they were targeted. Now, what's troubling, I think, to the American people is here we are, the greatest justice system in the world, and we can't do anything about it. We're not. Forget about Lois Lerner for a second. Let's just get to those people who are responsible for the targeting. Right, and, and, and I, I agree with you. I mean, uh, you know, you look at the stats alone, and uh, you know, when you learn 100 percent of the audits uh, audits were for um, you know right wing uh, affiliates, then uh, you know that, that's that, that's undeniable. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know what if anything they're going to do with that. I mean, it, it certainly was uh, shocking to me. I'll tell you something. If they don't get their act together and do something, I, I think little by little people's confidence in, in the government is just slipping away. And uh, being in New York, even our local governments are slipping away from us. It's, it's really a, it's a, We live in strange times, quite frankly, Jonathan, in my opinion. But anyway, coming up uh, after the break, uh, Jonathan, we're going to talk about Senator uh, Marco Rubio's uh, announced uh, proposed uh, uh, legislation, talking about how more government or federal employees... Uh, should be hired without a traditional college degree, which I'm kind of in favor for. I'd like to get your take on it, Jonathan. And 